Granada. Guarded by its hilltop fortress, the Alhambra, it stood untouched, its secrets of survival written in stone, water, and time. While city after city across Spain crumbled under the weight of conquest, Granada endured. Its towers rose above the valley, glowing against the mountains, a symbol of strength and defiance. Yet what truly protected it was not only stone or steel, but something far more subtle. Within its walls flowed a hidden power, a silent force that cooled the air, filled the gardens, and gave rhythm to life itself. That force was water, and it carried the soul of the palace, the fortress on the hill. From a distance, the Alhambra looked like a crown resting above Granada. Its walls stretched across the ridge, watching over the valleys below. To the invaders, it was more than a palace. It was a challenge. High stone ramparts, guarded gates, and towers that seemed impossible to scale gave the city a sense of safety that few others still had. But inside those walls, the Alhambra was not only about defense. It was also about beauty, balance, and comfort. The courtyards opened to the sky, filled with gardens and flowing fountains. Cool breezes slipped through carved windows and arches, carrying with them the sound of water. What made the Alhambra different was how life inside it seemed untouched by the chaos outside. Soldiers guarded its gates, yet poets, artists, and diplomats walked its halls. It was a fortress and a sanctuary at once. And at the center of it all, beyond the marble floors and red walls, lay something invisible but essential. Water. Without it, the palace would have been only stone. With it, the Alhambra became alive. It shaped the rhythm of daily life, giving not just survival, but also elegance to those who lived there. This secret, hidden beneath its beauty, was what kept Granada thriving while others fell. The Royal Canal. The Alhambra stood high above Granada, safe on its hill, but this raised a serious problem. The Darrow River, the city's main water source, flowed far below. Without water, the palace could not survive, let alone flourish with its baths, fountains, and gardens. The engineers of Granada knew they needed to find a way to bring the river to the hilltop. They looked far upstream, nearly six kilometers away, where the river ran higher than the palace itself. There, they built a dam and redirected the flow into a man-made channel. This became known as the Royal Canal. The work demanded extreme care. The slope of the channel had to be gentle and steady, so the water would keep moving without losing its strength too steep and it would flood, too flat and it would stop. Every curve through the hills had to be planned with patience and precision. When the canal finally reached the outskirts of the palace, it carried with it a lifeline. It had taken countless hours of labor and careful design to complete, but this achievement only set the stage. The water had arrived yet it still lacked the power needed for the vision of the Alhambra. The canal was the beginning, not the end. Storing power in water. The stream that reached the palace was steady, but it was gentle. It could water the gardens, but it could not power fountains or heat baths. To achieve that, the engineers needed pressure, stored energy, that could be released at will. Their answer was as brilliant as it was simple. They built a reservoir higher than the palace itself. First, they dug out a vast pool capable of holding hundreds of cubic meters of water, but the canal alone could not fill it. To solve this, they created a deep well beneath the reservoir. Into this well, water from the canal flowed. At the surface, a wooden wheel fitted with buckets was turned by animals, lifting the water from below and pouring it into the pool above. Once full, 
this reservoir became the palace's beating heart. It was more than just storage. It was power. With so much water resting at a higher point than the palace, the entire network below became charged with pressure. Now fountains could leap into the air, baths could be filled with ease, and courtyards could stay lush through the heat of summer. The pool also served another purpose. In times of drought or siege, it held enough supply to keep the palace alive. This balance of foresight and science turned water into strength, giving the Alhambra its quiet resilience. The heart of Alhambra, the Lion Fountain. At the very center of the palace stood a fountain unlike any other. It was more than decoration. It was a clock carved in stone and powered by water. Twelve lions, each sculpted with care, circled a wide basin. From their mouths, streams of water could appear one by one, marking the passage of hours. The secret lay in the bowl above them. A narrow pipe filled it at a slow and steady pace. Around the edge, Twelve openings had been carved at different heights, each connected to a lion. As the water rose, it would reach one hole after another, releasing a stream through the lion it was tied to. Every hour a new jet appeared until all twelve were flying by midday. When the bowl finally brimmed, a hidden siphon emptied it in a rush. The basin drained within moments, and the process began again. No one needed to touch it. No one needed to adjust it. The design worked on its own day after day, as if time itself flowed through its channels. To visitors, the fountain was a wonder. To those who lived in the Alhambra, it was a reminder that water could be more than survival. It could carry meaning. It could carry time. And in the silence of the courtyard, the soft sound of trickling streams became the palace's heartbeat, steady and eternal. Life in water, the thermal baths. Beyond the courtyards and gardens, another marvel waited deep inside the Alhambra. Here, water was not only used for beauty, but for comfort and ritual. The thermal baths were a place where kings, nobles, and foreign guests gathered. Deals were made here, alliances shaped, and trust built in the calm of steam and flowing pools. The baths were carefully divided. A cold plunge refreshed the body. Warm rooms relaxed the mind. The hottest chamber, lined with marble, offered a floor that seemed to glow from beneath. Beneath it, channels carried hot air and steam from wood-fired boilers. The water, heated in copper tanks, traveled through hidden pipes to fountains and showers that filled the chambers. The steam itself rose through small vents carved into pillars, spreading evenly through the room. Above, the roof held star-shaped windows. Some could be opened to release heat, others closed to hold it in. Light streamed down in soft patterns, mixing with the vapor until the air itself seemed alive. Here, water was more than a resource. It was an experience. To step inside was to feel the union of art, science, and nature. What seemed like luxury was also a statement. The Alhambra was not only strong, it was civilized. It was a place where life could be lived with grace, even in a time of constant war outside its walls cooling the palace. Granada's summers were fierce. The sun pressed down on the hills, turning stone and earth into ovens. Yet inside the Alhambra, life remained gentle. The secret was water, moving quietly through pools, channels, and shaded courtyards. As breezes swept across the surface of the fountains, the air cooled. The flowing streams carried freshness through archways and gardens, softening the heat that burned outside the walls. Every corner of the palace seemed touched by this quiet design. Marble floors stayed cool beneath bare feet. Rooms filled with soft echoes of dripping water. 
masking the dry winds of the valley. The effect was more than physical. The sound of trickling streams calmed the mind. The shimmer of light on the pools reminded those who lived here of balance, of order, of peace. In a land where summer could be merciless, the Alhambra became an oasis. It showed how engineering could do more than solve a problem. It could create a feeling, a way of life. Here, water shaped the very air, making the palace a refuge where time seemed to slow and worries drifted away with the breeze. The Mystery of Water Rising At the western edge of the palace, the soldiers' quarters stood higher than the rest. Reaching it with water was not simple. The usual methods, wheels, ropes, and animals, were left behind in favor of something far more subtle. Engineers designed a device that worked with nothing but the nature of water and air. A basin was filled, and as it drained, a whirlpool appeared. At its heart, air was drawn down and mixed with the stream below. This blend of bubbles and water moved into a narrow pipe. Because it was lighter than pure water, it climbed higher, rising nearly six meters above its source. To the eye, it seemed like a trick of magic. In truth, it was science hidden in plain sight. This small invention was more than a solution. It was a symbol of the Alhambra itself, a place where knowledge and imagination walked side by side. From the lion fountain that measured hours, to the baths that calmed rulers, to the cooling channels that softened the summer heat, everything within the palace spoke of a deep understanding of life. Centuries later, the streams still flow, reminding us that strength is not only in stone walls, but in ideas that endure. The Alhambra remains alive, carried by water's silent song. The Alhambra is more than a fortress or a palace. It is a memory carved in stone and carried in water. Every fountain, every channel, every pool tells the story of a people who refused to be forgotten. They shaped nature with patience and vision, leaving behind something that still breathes centuries later. To walk through its courtyards is to hear voices from another time, speaking through the quiet flow of streams. Long after empires have vanished, the water still runs. It reminds us that beauty and wisdom can outlive power, echoing gently through the heart of Granada.